the first thing that comes to mind when I think about the 100 year anniversary of the Communist Party of China is the fact that I've lived in China for one fifth of all that time. During my time uh, here in Guangdong, uh, a province that is known as the factory of the world, I have seen the transformation of what used to be very small fishing villages into very large cities. In my city, for example, we enjoy intelligent high rises. We have a comprehensive, eco-friendly mass transportation solution. We can feel a real push for renewable energy sources from government. We enjoy wireless communication coverage all over the city at 5G speeds. We see the implementation of AI and the Internet of Things in daily life. There is commerce where cash is not necessary. There's online shopping, which is easy, safe and fast. There are fairs, logistics and financial entities that make trade seamless for investors. And there is R&D, which has put China at the forefront of mobile phone manufacturing, app and game development and big data. Big data is a huge thing in China. And this is without talking about China's space program, which includes Beidou GPS, Tianwen-1 and recently Tianzhou 12. So in my opinion, China's success derives from its unique government and political system, without a doubt. Now, having overcome their initial challenges and uh, successfully united Chinese people, the birth of the People's Republic of China allowed the Communist Party to lay the foundations for the reform and opening up, which changed China forever. So by promoting its more capable members into leading roles in government, China is able to push forward undivided policies and strategies that end up accomplishing what can only be described as economic and social miracles. Now, the Communist Party of China can plan long term because they are not pitted against each other in a popularity contest like donkeys and elephants. In fact, the opposite is true. Their knowledge, their expertise and the vision kind of accumulates in a continuum that creates the phenomenal transformation that I have had the pleasure and the honor of witnessing during my time here. Seeds only grow strong in fertile soil. This is why China has identified education as the prima mata for the materialization of their present and future needs. Today, China graduates more STEM students than the next four countries combined. Think about that. Since the reform and opening up, people have heed the call to mobilize towards regions of economic potential in search of uh, professional and business opportunities. Now, in doing so, they have successfully created the country that their ancestors knew China could one day become. Having accomplished the development and modernization of the coastal areas to the south and east, now the Chinese government is looking to the north and west to replicate the successful implementation of this scheme. This is why we now see competent and prosperous entrepreneurs who once migrated south and east heading back to their hometowns to reconnect and modernize rural areas of China where life depends mostly on the land. However, their expertise and their funds alone cannot achieve rural revitalization. Infrastructure is needed to, to create channels that can connect the country in all directions. So the rapid pace at which China's railway and highway network has grown actually enables the flow of goods and resources throughout the land. This is why today we can see cultural minorities that are able to access nationwide markets online with their products and their produce, as well as welcoming an ever growing demand for unique tourist destinations. So enabling the interconnectivity and mobility of Chinese people, in my opinion, is at the core of the success of China's poverty alleviation program. So on the occasion of a hundred year anniversary of the Communist Party of China, I would like to congratulate China and the Chinese people. If the past hundred years are any indication, we can all rest assured that China's future will be bright.